Tech juggernaut Apple just announced its new iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods, but a lot of people are disappointed. Oh, Tim Cook, you're so lucky that Huawei and Xiaomi are banned because, let's be honest, we are so much more advanced. Yes, Tim Cook, don't get cooked. <laughs> oh my goodness, Andrew, the internet is going nuts right now. I'm no longer impressed. You don't need a new phone with every Apple release, Andrew. This was the recommendation from the New York Times. Oh, man, this really should have been in an email. Why do people make us wait a year for this? Oh, my gosh, I'm disappointed in Apple. There's no more innovation. Someone said desert titanium literally this is just a deeper version of rose gold and other people said how are you going to sell apple intelligence and the features aren't even ready for the new phone all right so what we're going to do is david we're going to go through the main points of this apple event that happens every year a lot of people tune in everybody's very excited because apple is known for its innovation or at least it's uh it's execution of innovation. Right, right, right. Not. But here's the thing, guys. We're not a tech channel. I know a lot of people are disappointed, but we're going to be focusing on the unique element, Andrew, of basically what are the Chinese phones doing right now? Ah, because a lot of people, and uh, this is some sentiment on the internet. I'm not saying everybody's saying this, but they're kind of like, man, Apple, you're pretty lucky that you banned all these high-tech Chinese phones for, you know, whatever governmental and security reasons. But... They have all the tech that you need. And I do think that even the Chinese phone companies, for example, Andrew, like OnePlus, that can answer the, that are in the US market, they don't go as hard. You know why? Because the um, US is a 60% market share for Apple products. Globally, the globe, Andrew, is 70% Android. Right. Obviously, especially in, in uh, emerging a, lot markets. Of, a lot of emerging markets, you know, countries with it, not as much money, they use more Android. Well, that's because, Andrew, in America, everybody uses iMessage as their default messaging software. In a lot of other countries, what is it? WhatsApp, Line, mm -hmm. Kakao, WeChat, et cetera. Could be anything. Right. Um, let's just take a look at this, Andrew. Real quick, are people sick of this yet? The, the iPhone looks the same since essentially the 12. Okay. Visually. Yes. That, that, you know, I'm talking about the, uh, the, you know, the Pro Max. Yeah, listen, I'm of, two, I'm, a, I'm of two perspectives here. On one perspective, I'm like, you know, you don't need a new phone every year. Who cares? Why do, why do you care about this Apple event? What do you... Well, you, you are, you, you're not going to upgrade. I'm not upgrading. I have to fit, you know, I, I have a good phone. You know, but I'm saying like, what is the expectation? What if Apple were to just do this event like every 18 months instead of 12 months? 12 months is really not a lot of time. Right, you're saying nowadays. it's a tiny product cycle. Yeah, and, and no, there, I'm not making excuses for Apple, but I'm just like, it is hard to innovate every single year. And then also... Is it kind of stupid to complain? Oh, the iPhone only got bigger and a little bit faster and then it has this new button. Why didn't they turn it into a spaceship? It's no. kind of stupid to complain. Yeah. Sort of. I would say this. A lot of people are arguing that phone tech is pretty much maxed out. But here's the thing. I do think if they change the casing and they dramatically change the shape of the iPhone, they would have a lot more opportunity. But within the confines of keeping the design relatively similar, I think they're pretty much maxed out. Like, unless they make... Like, have you seen some of the Chinese phones, Andrew? The lens for the camera is about like half the phone. Right, right. But obviously they're thinking that the average consumer in America doesn't want that. So they can only make the improvements within the relative confines of like what they think is most palatable to most people. Mm, okay. All right, point number two, Andrew. The Chinese phones are taking the most risks by far. What do you mean risks? Like we're talking about just like they look super different. We're talking about foldables that are ultra thin. We're talking about partnering up with Leica, partnering up with Hasselbad, basically camera makers to make phones like really taking the camera technology to another level. Right, right, right. But with that said, the iPhone camera still reigns, I want to say supreme or a top two. For video. Yes. But I think that actually for photos now, a lot of people are saying Google Pixel uh, 9 Pro XL or the Xiaomi Ultra 14 mm, the are Google Pixel does take great photos. It has amazing post-processing as well. Um, but... We got to talk about, Andrew, just like Chinese EVs, and I'll pump up a bunch of cool-looking Chinese EVs right now, they're essentially, Chinese phones are banned from entering the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's like, even Chinese shoe brands only, Andrew, they only started to stock the Kyrie Anta 1 at Hibbert Sports, which is a major right, mainstream right, right. American retailer, just like this month. Right, right. So I'm saying that everything, 
it's interesting because there is a lot of cool Chinese stuff, but it's not really allowed to enter the U.S. market without heavy taxes, or it's just simply just not allowed, period. Right, right. And we all know a lot of the reasons why. Right. Uh, point number three, Andrew, the ecosystem still matters, though. As much as people are complaining about Apple, they're still going to use iMessage because that is the default culture in America. So if you have iMessage and AirDrop, aren't people going to continue to stay within the ecosystem? Yeah, I think it is kind of part of American society at this point. Apple Pay is useful. I'm not here just to promote Apple, guys. I'm not getting paid. I'm just saying Apple Pay is nice. A lot of people accept They do it. take Android. Do they only take... No, they only take Apple Pay in the New York subway, right? Yeah, once the institutions and America adopts it, then Apple becomes kind of America's brand. And once it's integrated and trusted, and they're going to have to play by certain rules, then... Yeah, they see the benefit. Obviously, you're not going to be able, you don't get to scan your, you know, you you can just scan your your Apple phone and your Apple wallet on a bunch of things. Right. MTA, everything. Point number four, Andrew, a lot of people are saying that Apple is caring so much about environmental impact. That's why they don't really give you everything in the box anymore. They just give you a wire. They don't give you the brick anymore. But a lot of people are saying, you know, I, I care about the environment, but Apple, you better give us some new technology. Do you think people are over their eco craze where you know how they were caring about like carbon emissions and carbon credits and offsetting different environmental impacts, obviously on mother nature. Right, right. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, th I think, I, I think the care, maybe making, maybe the, when it comes to the environment that making that the point of your company, I think that has peaked. Right, the ESG, right? Yeah. Uh, point number five, Andrew, people want their phone to look different. Uh -huh. If it's looked the same since number 12, Andrew, what are you going to do? Like I said, I'm popping up some of the Chinese phones here, Andrew. This oh is a God. OnePlus 12. This is a, a Huawei phone with a screen on the back. There's all coming in all different types of jade imperial court colors Ooh. with all types of leather backings. Andrew, look at the camera attachment on the Xiaomi, Xiaomi 14 Ultra it looks like a camera camera. Dang. And of course, Andrew, let's not even get into folding phones. Obviously, the Fold 6, Pixel 9 Fold. But look at these Chinese folding phones, too. Um, I'm saying that a lot of people are saying, Andrew, that the new Pixel 9 Pro XL looks like an iPhone. But people are arguing that it looks like a better looking iPhone than an iPhone, even if they made it look like an iPhone. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I would say that Pixel 9 Pro does look pretty good. And I do feel like at some point, though, there's kind of a general accepted, like, shape of a phone. Like, you're not going to deviate that much. Like, you know, cars kind of look similar, guys. They have four wheels. There's a thing in the front that's a little bit bigger than the back. Not the Cybertruck. Cybertruck broke that. Yes, that is true. The Cybertruck broke that whole frame. But in general... There's a general shape to a car, to a sedan right. that people want to buy. You know, Honda, Civics, uh, Toyota. And, right, they, and you're saying once the consumer market has sort of decided this is what we're comfortable with, it's on the manufacturers to adapt unless they can come up with something markedly better to shift consumer behavior and patterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, point number six, Andrew, are you sick of it? Yes, no. I mean, a lot of people are just asking the questions, man. Can companies release the same thing year in and year out and basically expect people to shell out three, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars every year for very, very incremental improvements? Yeah. Well, you know what? My message to the people out there that are disappointed. Guess what? You don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy it. Now, I think Apple's innovation, you can say, is a little stagnant. I do agree. It, oh, a lot of people are saying Tim Cook, Andrew, he's a, a, a shareholder manager more than a yeah, technologist. Oh, Steve Jobs would never let this happen. Of course, no one's replacing Steve Jobs. But also, I would hope that the next one is a bigger leap. Maybe this one, they were like, guys, all right, we got to just give you a little bit more. We don't have that much stuff going on. We're working on these other things that aren't quite ready yet. So we're just going to compromise this year. But I was just like, year that, after hey, year. I'll tell you this, that iPhone 17 better look different. Year it, after year, though, it's tough to, to keep innovating, man. It is. And I, at that rate, I mean, I mean, you should always be innovating. Apple's, that's Apple's whole, like, thing is that they have to innovate but i'm just saying year after year but you tough. know what it is man they put all the, the 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 technology and all the engineers and they put them on the apple vision pro technology and that, that is, was a flop that is true the apple vision bro i've been said that i have that on record david 
I have it on record when the Apple Vision Pro dropped. I have this in a video that I said that was far away from being used in well, real Well, it probably life. took 10 years to develop, and that was still like riding the metaverse trend from back in the day. It, it's not useless forever, but it's just not useful right now. All right, so I have two final thoughts on this, guys. And I know, you, you know we're not a technology channel, but we're, I'm going to relate it back to China. One, Andrew, if they integrate... RCS, which is the Android version of iMessage with iMessage, I think that in America, they will lose 10 million users right off the bat. Whoa. 10 million users will switch. But right now, iMessage is its own separate system, right? right and nobody right, wants right. the green bubbles. I'm saying the green bubbles is probably saving them 10 to 20 million people switching in America alone. Mm -hmm. And globally, I think up to 50 million people would switch if I, uh, RCS and iMessage ever got merged together. Right, right, right. And then number two, Andrew, I guess... How long can America not allow Chinese EVs or Chinese cell phones into the market? Because I'm saying if some of them are becoming the most advanced in the entire world, I get it. There's geopolitical things. There's tariff things. There's all these type of things. But, you know, I don't know. They might control them like DJI drones all of a sudden out of our control. But I'm saying how long, if these are the most innovative products in the entire product segment, can you keep them at bay? I think that... For political reasons and security reasons, they're just not going to let them in. They're just not. That's it. Why, why would America want money to go to Chinese companies? Right? But then the consumers are missing out on a better product. They don't care about the consumers. The consumers have other stuff to buy. There's actually... I, I do wish that they would let some Chinese phones in. But I've had to be honest, there's plenty of stuff to buy in America. Yeah. I mean, the pixels are pretty good. All right, so everybody. Samsung, the S24 Ultra is good. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Are you disappointed by this Apple thing? What are there are some Chinese uh, phone brands or Chinese EV brands that you're interested in that they should let over? But of course, we know that there are reasons for that. But anyways, let us know in the comments down below and hit that like button. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.